In this video, we're going to use a method known as reverse complete the square in order to find the quadratic that, when it's solved, gives us the solutions 2 plus root 3 over 4 and 2 minus root 3 over 4. To help us, we need an x in here, so we're going to say, since these are the solutions, x is equal to these solutions, and solutions always come in pairs when they're irrational, plus and minus, so let's write this as 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 4. Now, one thing that might make this difficult to work with is the fact that we have a fraction. Well, we can quickly clear a fraction by multiplying both sides of the fraction by the LCD, in this case, multiplying by 4, so that they can divide out of the right side. This gives us 4x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Now that the fraction is out of the way, we want to try and get that plus or minus part alone so that we can get rid of it by squaring both sides. So we need to get it alone. We need to get that 2 out of there. We'll subtract 2 from both sides. This gives us 4x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Once that plus or minus term is alone, we can now get rid of that plus or minus by squaring both sides. Be careful on the left side, because of the subtraction in the middle, we can't just distribute the squared through. We have to square the first term. 4x squared is 16x squared. And then we multiply the terms together twice. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x, and negative 8x is negative 16x. And then finally, square the last term. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Equals, the plus or minus doesn't matter. When we square a square root, we're just left with what's inside the number 3. We like our equation to equal 0, so we'll subtract 3 from both sides. And this gives us the equation 16x squared minus 16x plus 1 equals 0. Let's try another example, where we do this exact same process, but this time with complex numbers. Again, we're going to make x equal to this stuff, with the minus and plus being shorthanded. So in this case, we have 3 plus or minus 5i over 2. And again, we want to get rid of the parentheses. I'm sorry, we want to get rid of the fraction. So we get rid of the fraction by multiplying by 2, that LCD, giving us 2x equals 3 plus or minus 5i. Again, we want to get the i part alone, with the plus or minus, so we have to subtract 3 from both sides. 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus 5i. Once we have that plus or minus alone, we can get rid of that plus or minus by squaring both sides of the equation, because squaring makes anything positive. Again, because of the subtraction on the left side, we can't just square both parts. We need to... well, that's part of it. We square the 2x, gives us 4x squared, and then multiply them together twice. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Negative 6x and negative 6x is negative 12x. And finally, we square the 3 to get positive 9. Equals, when we square a plus or minus, that's gone. 5 squared is 25, and then we also have i squared. And if we remember that definition, i squared is equal to negative 1, that means that's going to make this a negative 25. We can finish it off, then, to find our final equation by adding 25 to both sides. This gives us 4x squared minus 12x plus 34 equals 0. We found that equation by making our solutions equal to x as a shorthand, clear the fraction and isolate the plus or minus, square both sides, and make it equal to 0.